Hello. Right, uh, today's project is to make a helmet for the son of a friend of mine who wants to dress as a medieval knight. Understandable. And um, what I've decided to do is make my interpretation of what they call a great helm. And this is the sort of classic crusader style helmet. People have been, would have been wearing this, charged about the Holy Land, causing death and destruction. So it's also called the bucket helmet, but I'm going with great helm. <laughs> Interestingly, one of the things I didn't know about this style of helmet is that it was often worn, the reason it's called a great helm, it's often worn over another helmet. So what these knights would have had that were wearing these, these great helms would, would have been a uh, cloth coif, which goes over their head, and then a male coif over that. So, and then on top of that, a very snug fitting helmet. And then on top of that, when they rode into battle, they put on the great helm over the whole lot. So yeah, they would have been well protected, but they would have been bloody hot. <laughs> they've just been awful. And of course they're wearing all the other mail as well and carrying weaponry. Crikey, that was a sweated buckets. <laughs> Bonkers. Well, better than being dead, I suppose. So anyway, back to the point. Um, what I'm gonna do, as the boy is six, I'm gonna make this out of aluminium rather than steel. Um, you know, it won't offer anywhere near his protection, but I'm hoping he won't actually be um, likely to go into battle with it. So it's got, it's got to be able to hold the thing up. So this is a fairly simple construction. These are all um, made of three main pieces that are riveted together, and I'm going to try riveting together alley sheet with copper rivets. That's my plan. If you do a Google search then on Great Helm or Pembroke Helm or something along those lines, you'll come up with loads of images of um, designs for them. And this is one I made up from several that I saw. So you can see here, this is the front piece and this is the bit that goes there, the top half of it over the head. And then there'll be another sort of um, oval shaped piece that goes around the crown. So. Rather than make a poor little six-year-old wear all the gubbins that normally goes under a helmet, and because the helmet itself can't sit straight on his head, because that wouldn't be very comfortable, I decided to use one of my old construction hard hats as the basis for the helmet. So what this will allow is me to use all this, the suspension part in here to actually sit on his head, and then the helmet will hang around this. Right, let's go and cut the cardboard. I couldn't actually measure the young chap himself because this is supposed to be a surprise for him. But um, his mum said she had a very similar sized head. So, take her at her word, and I measured her head and I took the relevant dimensions with her wearing the hard hat of what I thought the helmet should be. And uh, that gives me something to, to start with at least. See if we can get a prototype together in cardboard before I go spending any money on that aluminium. Right, let's get a box and some scissors. It's a bit snug. <laughs> Very snug. So we want it going from down here straight up. I need this V shape. But what I don't know is the angle here between that upright and this bit here. So we'll have to experiment. Of course we will. Right, just back from the shops and I bought myself some sheet metal. Two pieces of aluminium. And I must say it does rather go against the grain buying new materials for one of my projects, but especially when I've got so much aluminium lying around. 
But like I said, this one, I want it to be nice, new and shiny looking. And um, one advantage of buying new stuff is it's loads thinner than what I've got here already, and um, therefore lighter, which, as it's going on a six year old's head, is a good thing. 0.8 of a mil thick. This one's 300 mil across, this one's 200, and they're both a metre long. So the bigger piece, Will accommodate the main part. So this other piece isn't quite as high here as either of these V-shapes that I've currently been working on. But I figured both of these angles are too acute, so I'm gonna redo this in card to try it out um, at this overall height. So let's do that now. Right, I was up at until about one o'clock last night. So the next morning, I've been through some more revisions and I think I'm about there with the cardboard templates. These are the reject shapes. Uh, right, um, yeah, I think we're gonna go with that. So, off to the workshop. I'm going to try this, this is a, an air powered nibbling tool and it cuts out little crescents um, which are really sharp and stick in your socks at least that's what I found Okay, can I think? It's not brilliant, really. So instead, I might try one of these burrs. These are from my die grinder. They should be much sharper. Right, I think the next thing to do is to put a crease in here. Yeah, this is the front. So I need to put um, a crease in the back of it, which will go all the way down the front of the helmet. And a crease on this bit here, in the back of this one as well. Um, hmm. Now, I don't want to put it in something like this bit of angle line as a former and whack it into that because it will just mark the out, the out surface horribly. So I'm wondering if I can use a bolster chisel and come in from the back and just smack it with that. Let's experiment. Yeah. So that's doing what I want. It's putting the crease in nicely. The only about it is the corners are putting in the, a bit more of a dent than I want if it's not perfectly flat, which it won't be. So I'm going to take this to the grinder and just radius off the edges of the bolster chisel just so that doesn't happen. You can see there and there the corners are gone. You 
should be able to see that's just just right, I think. Right, and I need a former that's sturdy and um, a smaller diameter than what I want to end up with. So I can roll it around the former and then it'll pop out and stay circular. So what I've come up with is a, an old fire extinguisher. This is where being aluminium is a real blessing. There we go. Right, I have found some tiny little nuts and bolts. So I can do a bit of test assembly, which is good. Yes, if you're going to make one, and quite frankly, why wouldn't you? These little uh, nuts and bolts are very handy. Right, time for the panel beating stuff. So, here's some dollies here and a panel beating hammer. Let's see what we can do with that. So a panel beating hammer is, is domed over, so it's, it puts less dinks in the metal that you're whacking. Hard hat can sit in at the right height. That's the plan. Right, I've had a spot of luck with the mounting of the hard hat inside. Let's see if I can get this to show up. So this bolt here goes into the back of the hard hat, just there. And I was using the bolt there and the bolt there to hold it in place. It turns out I've been able to. Let's see. We're going to show this. So you see there that bolt there, and it's opposite one there. So I was able to drill into the hard hat just up from the rim here, and sneak those bolts in, and that means that um, I'll leave those instead of rivets. I'll leave those as bolts. And they'll bolt through. I'll put a nut on the end there, and then the hard hat will actually be bolted in place, which is brilliant. Um, I've been bolting in the other bits, so it's all pulling together, and it's all starting to look fairly convincing now. So I've got a bunch of offcuts there from the chopping out the main bits, and I reckon this one just about do. So the next job is to start the riveting. So I've used bolts entirely so far to construct it, which is really good. So if, if you do this, I really recommend bolting it first, rather than committing to the rivets. Especially if you're like me, you've got no real idea what you're doing. But let's try what should be an easy one in the side first. So I'll go with one of these. Right, so we've got the rivet is in. Well, that doesn't look great. 
So I need a rivet snap, I need a piece of round or square bar with a hole drilled in the end that will sit over that dome and finish it off. That just looks a bit mashed at the moment. Right, I'm going to try and make a snap for the top of the rivets using this off cut of thread bar. Um, I made a little pilot hole in there. Right, so here's a, one of the rivets. So let's measure the, the top. Just smidgen under six mil. Now the trouble is here that the top of the drill bit is pointy. I'll see the top of the dome is round. So I'm going to take the, I'm going to reprofile the drill bit on the grinder. Let's see if I can make that a bit rounder. So I put a much flatter profile on it. And let's see. You got to see there. So that sits now snugly in there. Yeah, that's much better. Right, it took quite a lot of swearing, um, but I found the only reliable method so far for setting the rivets in the top here is to put them in upside down. I'm going to put it in with the domed head inside. I'll put that, this is just a, drive, a Land Rover drive shaft I'm going to use as a stake. That goes there. That gives me something solid to hammer on. And then using the, the ball peen on the hammer Set the rivet with some control now. Yeah, so we'll call that flat rivets, I suppose. I reckon I'll have the hang of it by the time I'm done. <laughs> so I've got all the rivets on now and I've started to tidy it up it around, getting everything looking right, getting the fit closer. And what I did was just set the rivets to begin with and now if I need to I can tighten them up a bit in various places. I'm also working around with this snap. Cleaning up the heads a little bit. So the first two rivets I did, I ended up replacing because they looked awful. Like I said, now I've done all this, I think I've got the hang of them. Right, is it finished? Uh, 
Shall we try it on? Hmm. Cool. That is actually quite comfortable with the hard hat inside, supporting my head. That's actually not bad. That's not... My articulation is a bit constricted, but it doesn't feel much different to wearing a motorbike helmet. Actually, my beard's a bit vulnerable. <laughs> so, I just hope it fits a six-year-old. So, there we go. That's uh, another project done and dusted. Um, I'm quite pleased with the outcome. <laughs> it took a lot of effort, not in the actual work, but in the working out of the work. The templating, the cardboard templates took forever to do. Um, yeah, but I think it's quite a nice design in the end. And having the construction hard hat inside makes it comfortable to wear and makes it adjustable for anybody. And um, it, it, I think it gave you gives you something to build it around as well, so I'm, I'm going to call that a good idea. The rivets, I wish I'd bought fatter ones and shorter ones, um, but yeah, I got by, it worked out right. The aluminium, yeah, if you're going to wear an aluminium helmet and you ride into battle, at least try not to get hit. Um, it is much lighter than steel, although well, I could have used really thin steel, I suppose, but yeah, this did the job for what I wanted, and um, I guess it's never going to rust. <laughs> well, I hope the young'un's happy with it. If he is, he'd be wanting the sword next, wouldn't he? Anyway, that'll do for now. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks for watching.